Jacob and myself got a couple of Kawasaki four-stroke engines that are seized up. So we're going to take them apart and see what's wrong with them. I got that Kawasaki Ultra 250 and that's the engine I'm going to be taking apart. And Jacob got that Kawasaki four-stroke engine in a jet ski package deal that he just got the other day with the Tiger Shark that he launched out of the back of his truck. <laughs> So our plan is to go ahead and strip these engines down real quick and see what the devil is going on inside these Kawasaki engines. Yep, we got a massive team. It's going to be me, Josh, and Milo just going straight on into it. And we're going to find out in real time what's wrong with these things. Timing chain tensioner. Still a thousand times easier than a car engine. All right, now we're gonna do it again, guys. Down, double down. Another timing chain tensioner. <laughs> What do you got there, buddy? Can you hand me this? Can you hand me the wrench? Can you hand it to me? Can you hand Dad the wrench? Uh, oh, thanks, buddy. I hear the heads are the same on these. Well, but no, probably not because that one's got that angled bull crap. But I bet the NA ones are the same, per the internet. Yeah. At least whatever web page I looked at. Yeah. Well, you mean the fifteen hundred ones are all the same? I think the 1500 and the 1200 ones are the same, but the cam's different. Probably should take this friggin' intake manhole off. Here. Let's see. Here. Just like another day of working on cars. These are car engines, basically. I'm definitely doing this in the right order. Yeah. Well, on these, it probably would, doesn't matter. I would actually definitely think that it's important on like the camshaft cradle or like head bolts or but these are important things. Okay. Sweet. Real, real, man. Throw your hands up! Throw your hands up! The biscuit is back! Alright guys, if you happen to be doing a project like this of your own, I just want to let you guys know that these engines use this, like, uh, shim. The solid kind. And on your cylinder heads. And it's very possible that they're all different thickness, so you really want to keep them sorted on which one goes where. And in my case, I'm going to leave them all in here and use my smartly brain to never turn this head upside down. If I do turn the head upside down, then I'm going to be screwed. Yep. So when I, when I do need to like clean the head and work on it, I'm going to have to set the, find a place to set these out in an order so I can remember. Yep. It's like a dirt bike engine kind of. All right. Check this out. Jacob's got an NA camshaft. Yep. This is, uh, the, uh, NA camshaft for the 1200 and here is the supercharged camshaft on a 1500 uh well i can't really here let's see if the part number is the same 320 ex this is a 320 it's probably the casting thing's the same there's a 94 or whatever there where on the other side of that and this is a 74 <laughs> yeah i'm assuming they're cast from the same blank but they probably have a different grind yeah they're not kind of they're too lazy to make another casting right <laughs> um yeah it looks like to me, it looked kind of like the, um, uh, maybe the, uh, 
lift and duration was really similar. Maybe the t maybe the uh, advanced or the timing, what rotation of it might be a little different. Who knows? Let's see. I look like it looks like I got a stuck valve, but all yours look like they're in a position. But so with the cams off, you can see all my valves seem to be up. Actually, no. That one there looks stuck. Oh yeah. And that one looks stuck as well. Let's come over to this engine, and we first I got noticed that this one, one Jacob. and maybe that one. Yeah, they're both looking kind of stuck. So we're both kind of like fingers crossed, hoping that the heads are what's stuck on these things. That would be awesome if the bottom ends are perfect. Because what does it cost to do like a valve job compared to like a crank and crank shaft bearings? Yeah. So guys, we're pretty sure this is a twelve hundred. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> nice bent bolt. This is definitely a lot more like a dirt bike bolt. Guys, I'm addicted to power tools. Doing this without power tools would suck. And doing this in a ski. At least I didn't have to take this out of the ski. Meanwhile, on this 1500 engine, I'm just loosening. Well, I did these two. I did these two here. And also, I was asking Milo, when are you going to want to go see Mama? But he's just kind of hanging out. And now we got this. Milo, do you want the wrench back? No. I was just hanging out, having a great time. I thought he'd have to go back to mama by now. No, we got him calm down. He's oh. just like, yeah. Nice, beautiful exhaust pipe. We've got the beautiful exhaust pipe. Man, can you imagine doing this in the ski? It would be just in heck. It would be hell. It would be awful. Just hell. It would be excruciatingly unpleasant. I wonder why these engines break. It seems like they'd be the type of thing where as long as you like change the oil and stuff, it's fine. Yeah. Except for maybe the supercharger. I could see them blowing up. Freaking flapper McGee's and stuff. Well, a few different colors of transmission fluid in there. Ooh. Well, does it feel like anything's in pieces? I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Does it seem like he's finding any holes? Ooh. This one is crusty. Ooh -hoo. And a good hone on the Nicosil. Yeah. Oh, man. You're going to need some work, eh? Yeah. That's nasty. So, yeah. Now we're going to pull this one apart and see. Well, this thing didn't have any oil in it, so I don't think I'll have puddles like you do. You got to just rattle them. I see. Man, that baby is tight. Josh is going to break them free, and when they break free, he'll whack me in the face with the bar. <laughs> I don't think I can get back around to where you are. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I just need you to... I just need you to hold the motor steady there.
<laughs> get it up a little bit off of the chain guides. They got caught on my. All right, there you go. Those bull crap bolts are. Doing that. There you go. Oh, this looks nice. Oh. And there you have it, people. Hey, what do you think? Both of these motors are capped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ah, they'll clean up, yeah. I'm assuming that this particular design is very susceptible to filling up with water on the hose or if you tow it. Yeah, that makes sense. I feel like people do the thing where they leave the hose on for five hours when they run them and uh, they think it's like an outboard. Yeah, your ski has to be running if the water is turned on on your hose. Yep. Otherwise, stuff like this happens. Not the same as an outboard. Yours might be just as nasty, but mine has no covering of liquid to hide. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. Somebody somebody try, was trying to help mine at some point, so. Yeah. Yours, nobody's been helping. There you <laughs> go. Well, we do. Yeah, it's not here. All right, guys, that's how screwed these engines are. Yep, this one wasn't covered in liquid, so it's not hiding. This one is hiding. One bore here you can see looks like okay. Maybe that's a bit of rust, maybe it's a bit of gunk. Okay, it was just gunk. That The tiny bit of bore on that one looks okay, but the rest of these might just be completely screwed. So. Well, I mean, this I think is better than it, like if it threw a rod, I feel like that's worse than if it just filled up with water, you know? Because right. then the machine, it would, you know, need to be welded and machined and crap and maybe that doesn't work on these and, you know, that type of thing where it's like, oh, this, you know, technically you probably could clean them up and uh, maybe, maybe on this, I'm not like we've totally know well, yet. Well, we haven't pulled the cranks out, so... But these are the kind of bolt together cranks like on a car and not a jet ski so uh it doesn't it's not like you have to have special tools to uh, rebuild the crank unless the machine crank part itself is totally screwed over then uh, you probably throw it away or maybe there's somebody that wants to machine those but uh, that's uh, how it is yeah this jacob's engine it looks like it's at the point where it needs to start soaking because i'm you know, I'm sure this is where it seized, yeah, um, you know, so. Maybe I could borrow some of Josh's liquid. <laughs> we could somehow transfer the liquid. Liquid transfer. Let me think on that. It would be kind of cool if. I think we could transfer it, yeah. <laughs> we need like a turkey baster. Floop, 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 floop. Now that the oil is removed, it's about the same scenario as what's going on over there. But this one had... The last person who owned this obviously knew something was wrong and put oil in it. That's what, like, yeah. Somebody tried something. And the people always say, oh, it, it ran last time and now it doesn't run. Uh-huh. Sure. Well, I mean, the parts of the boards that I can see on this one are okay, but that don't necessarily mean anything. So it looks to us like neither one of these engines had like a catastrophic mechanical failure. It looks like they just uh, got water in them. Yep. They got water in them and they weren't taken care of properly after they got water in them. Yeah. So when your ski engine gets water in it, you need to probably worry about that, you know, immediately. Right. If your ski gets water in it, take care of it as soon as possible. And don't leave the hose on. Like, yeah, don't leave the hose on. That might have been... That's like just next door. That might have been somebody drop, dropping a, a cabinet on their foot. <laughs> you know notice when you hit something really hard with a hammer, it sounds like a gun a lot of times. Maybe it'll help. Oh, 
hold the timing chain, I guess. Maybe that's in the way. Almost. It's working. The crankshaft isn't seized, so hey. Hey, that's, that's something... one thing that's that's one thing that's good. Oops. <laughs> Craftsman tools. They will fall out of their toolbox with Every one time. flip. This is how far I've gotten this engine apart. And I'm trying to hold the camera steady. I shouldn't see that on the video. But the big issue is this cylinder here. The, what looks like, I believe these are Nixil cylinders and this Nixil has uh, corroded and peeled off. So, and then all of this, this cylinder also has some peeling on the Nixil. And so does this one. Pretty easy to see. Uh, I think it's possible this cylinder could be cleaned, but it also might have a spot where it's peeling on the Nicosol. I am 100% willing to pull the cylinder off and then run a hone on it and see what it cleans up to, but I have no great expectation for it to be usable without some sort of repair or replacement. Yep. Jacob is loading up his engine into his truck, just taking a look at the valves. Don't tip it too far, Jacob, or your things will fall out. But, yeah, he's got valves that are stuck. Yeah, and Josh probably has the same scenario. Yeah. But mine, we found, uh, it definitely has a mangled cylinder. Like, one of the pistons probably grenaded or something. So, um, but, yeah, mine, I, I'm thinking right now that mine's probably a little bit more messed up than Josh's. But also... This is, we, as far as we can tell, this is a 1200 and nobody cares about them. And you can buy this crap on eBay, probably way cheaper. But also, it might not be worth it to do anything with this at all. So, um, we're both kind of finding out that our crap sucks. I have no real urgent plans of getting this going. Because I got some other things that I feel are more important. So... I also still got to get the cylinder all the way off and check out the pistons and see where we're at there, but probably at least uh, piston rings, if not pistons, and a cylinder, and then whatever work to get those valves unstuck on the head, so like a valve job. Yep, and my engine's totally screwed over too, but I'm right now I'm kind of hoping that like whatever the crap I got to buy is like stuff you could buy for lunch money on eBay because it's 1200 I think, and nobody cares about them. Um, it might not be, but, um, uh, sh should I tell them what the ski is I intended to put that in? So nobody really guessed what ski I was going to put it in. It's fine, you know, whatever. But I got that thing, uh, for the bullet because, you know, the bullet is actually made for a four stroke as far as I can tell. And so either way, if that thing's totally screwed and I don't use it, I can at least kind of stick it in there and eyeball around and see, okay, is this like something that is worth trying to finish and do, or is this like totally a pain in the butt and I'll never do it ever again. Um, I kind of had thoughts of putting a 1500 into one of my super jets, my square nose in particular, because I'd have to cut the drive tunnel up and uh, move the drive shaft up on the firewall to make room for that engine because the oil pan is too low. But uh, I don't know if you guys have any ideas. It seems like these things for both of us are kind of going, you know, in the way that's going to take a lot of time and they're not on the, right on the front of what we're gonna do next. Um, so, you know, if you guys got any ideas, I, I kind of love the idea of uh, sticking one of these big four strokes in a super jet, but that's quite a bit of fab. And the bullet seems to be made for one of these and it probably would be pretty cool. So, I don't know, if you guys have any thoughts, I might actually use your advice because this is gonna be a soon video and I'll have plenty of time to think about it. So for my engine, my plan was to get it running get it actually back into the uh, Ultra 250 and do some testing with it. Uh, basically, I wanted to run the Ultra 250 on the track and also just test ride the Ultra 250 for myself to see how it felt. And then I was kind of kicking around the idea of dropping this engine into the miniature aluminum jet boat once it was proven to be okay and we'd run some laps on the Ultra 250. Then just pull it out, swap it right into the mini, mini jet boat and uh, just let her shred. Yeah, and an interesting point, you know, while we're on the thread, 
Um, yeah, I remember thinking it would be really cool to put one of these supercharged Ultra engines into like an Ultra 150. I'm not sure if any of you guys have found anybody on the internet who's done that or if anybody knows. Yeah, there's not even anywhere close to enough room and you know, that type of thing. But if anybody knows anything about that, tell us. Because that'd be, I think, a little bit interesting for our comments and section, so. Right, and if you're thinking that we were going to swap this 250 engine into the Ultra 130, that we had that Ultra 130 got sold. That was basically just a quick flip for us. Um, just bought it to test it on the track and see kind of what it could do and what those things feel like. Uh, interestingly enough, I did like that hole. Yeah, we enjoyed it, so that's why we thought this might be a cool idea. It was a really fun ski to ride, and I'm not exactly sure why people, what people's problem with that particular ski is, and it could be we just didn't get up to a high enough top speed to really experience the flaws of that hull, because when you're going slow enough, it just masks any problems on any jet ski hull. It's when you, the faster you go, the more the flaws are magnified. Exactly. But, let us know your thoughts below, and... On an upcoming video very soon, we're going to reveal what the LS motor is for. So stick with us, because you're going to see what happens with that. Yeah, exactly. For this entire video, Jacob and myself have been operating under the assumption that the engine that Jacob got is, in fact, a 1200 instead of a 1500. But he actually texted me later on that evening and said that it was actually a 1500 because he looked it over and he found... A spot on the engine block where it says 1.498 liters which would be 1498 cc's which would make it a 1500 here's the picture that he sent me so uh, it's pretty weird that the it has a shorter cylinder and it's still 1500 so I'm gonna see if I can find that stamped on this cylinder as well all right here it is right here 1.498 liter uh, you Kawasaki guys are probably just screaming at the screen to look at the side of the block and see that. And I'd love to hear an explanation from the Kawi guys as to why the supercharged engine has a taller cylinder. Uh, it was one centimeter taller than the naturally aspirated version. I'm going to go ahead and call Jacob and I just want to talk to him if he, and see if he's found out any more information on these engines. Hello? Hey, how are you doing? I'm okay, how are you? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. How was going back to work today? Uh, I mean, it didn't totally suck or anything. It was just whatever. Oh, right on. I was just wondering if you did any more research on these engines last night. No, I've got... I just started taking mine apart a little more. Yeah, and you found that stamp on the block where it says 1.498 leader yeah yeah and i looked at some pictures and it led me to believe that it might be that so yeah well yeah like why would they stamp that on the block if it's not well the first time i looked at was looking at pictures of the two different things and it looked more like the 1500 and i was like oh maybe that's what it is so uh yeah i got it like halfway I'm like halfway, the cylinder's like an inch off, and it's all rusty and fighting me the whole, whole way. But yeah, how's, how's your crankshaft? Does your crankshaft still spin? Uh, no, I don't think it spins like yours did, so. No, well, I, I can't really tell. I, yeah, it's hard to tell. All right, well, I guess I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. Bye. So there we are showing our Kawasaki four-stroke noob newbiness. Uh, this is mine and Jacob's first dive into the world of four-stroke Kawasaki engines. You know, if we were if we knew what we was doing, we would have looked on the side of the uh, of the uh, cylinder immediately to see that stamp that it's stamped as a 1.498 liters. That's it for now. I gotta clean up the garage. See ya. Ooh.